In this world, legendary weapons have their own will, but those same weapons will eventually turn their wielders known as Chrysalis into Busomas. Former humans who have fallen to the cursed weapons will and become possessed, turning their humanity aside and becoming demons. The story begins when a husband and a pregnant wife are walking in an alley, and suddenly, the husband gets stabbed with a sword on his chest by a random guy. Consumed by rage, the woman gets her revenge on her husband's murderer and goes on a murderous spree. Eventually, she decides to put an end to her misery in a mountain. A blacksmith called Ammon was traveling in the same mountain and found the woman hanging by the tree. He suddenly heard a baby crying and found a newborn holding a mysterious katana. He holed the baby up into the sky and decided to take him in. A couple of years later and the orphan child is now a teenager named Guy. One day, the blacksmith, who's his adopted father, leads him to his mother's grave. There, he asks Guy what he wants to do with his life. Guy says he's going to stay with them forever since he's got no future except for also being a blacksmith. Later that night, Guy sneaks into one of the rooms where the legendary katana called the Shiryu is placed. Tatsumi, one of his colleagues, sees him and reports him to the swordsmith master. But the master dismisses it as he found Guy holding the sword as a newborn. Later, the purifying ritual of the Shiryu begins because the sword has been releasing some energy. The purifying ritual is led by Sayaka, Guy's adopted sister. The ritual of the Shiryu is performed periodically to prevent the weapon from becoming hungry. Therefore, it needs Guy's blood to calm the sword down. Everyone must be blindfolded while Guy uses his blood to quench the Shiryu's thirst. But Tatsumi opens his eyes, thus exposing him to the murderous aura of the Shiryu. The sword murderous aura terrifies him right away. And then Shiryu possesses Sayaka and she attacks Tatsumi. Guy manages to push him away in time but at the cost of his left arm being cut off. Guy still feels immense pain even after spending a week in the hospital. Sayaka tries to comfort Guy, but he pushes her away and he starts running outside the estate. He reaches his mother's grave and starts stabbing the ground. When the master and Sayaka find him asking why is he doing that, he tells them that his mother abandoned him before becoming unconscious. Later that night, Guy wakes up and finds himself with a mechanical arm. The next day, Guy expresses his gratitude to his adopted father for easing his pain and giving him his arm back. The master explains that Shiryu is his guardian sword, which is unique as most of the legendary cursed swords do the opposite. Later, Sayaka finds Guy destroying Shiryu's scabbard and asks him why. He quickly tells her that she's not worthy of the sword that was melted to be his new arm. The next day, Sayaka arrives from school when Tatsumi fetches her. Due to Tatsumi's creepy love for Sayaka, he tries to take advantage of her and forces himself on Sayaka. But Guy arrives and interrupts the whole scene. Tatsumi charges forward to attack him. But Guy blocks his attack with ease, throwing Tatsumi to the ground. The Shiryu's murderous thoughts fill Guy's head, telling him to kill, which scares Tatsumi away. But Sayaka manages to stop him from doing anything. The voices in his head won't stop and Guy decides to reforge the arm, but he couldn't do it. Instead, he just bangs his head on the wall. Sayaka sees him and hugs him from behind, which frees him from those thoughts. Later that day Guy is working on the smithy and Tatsumi attacks him with a spear. He was possessed by the spear which is also one of the legendary weapons of the past. Tatsumi attacks once again but Guy blocks it off with his arm. However, Guy's stamina stat seems like it's close to zero since after blocking the attack. He falls down to his knees and hears the voices again. Guy becomes consumed with rage and loses his pupils, turning his mechanical arm into a sword. Both Guy and Tatsumi move out of the estate to fight somewhere empty. Tatsumi cuts two trees and rushes to attack Guy, but Guy blocks several of his attacks. Guy then does a piercing attack, stabbing through Tatsumi's abdomen. Tatsumi feels the pain and tries to flee from Guy but the latter follows him. Guy arrives on a blood moon map and tries to find Tatsumi. He sees a couple of bodies lying on the ground and tries to follow the tracks. But Tatsumi's on top of the building behind him. Tatsumi, fully consumed by rage and having met the required blood count, unlocks his skin and transforms into a busoma. Tatsumi leaps into the air and does a plunging attack. But Guy manages to dodge the attack. Guy then sprints forward to attack the Busoma, but Tatsumi does a sweep, which Guy dodges. Guy gets behind Tatsumi but the Busoma turns around for a spear back sweep. Guy manages to dodge this attack and does another piercing attack, this time, stabbing the Busoma's chest. This attack makes the Busoma unconscious. However, a helicopter spots them fighting and reports them to the Shashidai. Guy notices the heli and the pilot starts firing his gun. The attack wakes up the Busoma, who kicks Guy off of him and flees the scene. Guy unleashes his power and destroys the chopper engine and the pilot, resulting in a massive explosion. 
Later that night, Guy arrives back at the estate and Sayaka takes him after he falls unconscious. The master arrives and sees Guy's arm heat up while choking him. The master tries to ease Shiryu by preventing it from killing Guy, which leads to first degree burns. The next day, Sayaka looks out for Guy and finds him hiding in the closet. Guy closes the door, but Sayaka reopens the door, which makes Guy fall to the ground. Guy then tries to hide with the blanket. Sayaka removes the blanket and tells him he's no longer a kid, so Guy crawls under the space between her legs and sprints outside. Guy sees a reflection of himself and as he tries to hold a butterfly, it immediately got sliced in half. The master arrives and Sayaka tells her father that Guy is behaving like a kid, but Guy notices them and runs away. Both the master and Sayaka find Guy hiding inside one of their storehouses, biting his fingernails. The master tells Sayaka that Guy has turned his mental state into a baby one while trying to suppress Shiryu's power. The next day, Sayaka dresses up Guy and takes him to the festival. Later that night, Sayaka and Guy arrive at the temple and pray for Guy's protection. And the gods answered her prayers so quickly, that the same Busoma appears in front of them. The Busoma charges forward to attack them, but Guy thoughtlessly blocks the attack. But since Guy is not himself, the attack pushes him next to one of the statues. The Busoma takes Sayaka, posing to kill her. But someone throws a ring of light, which cuts the Busoma's arm off. The Busoma cries in pain, but picks up his spear and repeatedly attacks the mysterious guy. But the man keeps dodging the Busoma's attack with ease. The man summons another Chakram, transforming into a Chrysalis, which unlocks the power of a Busoma without the mindless carnage. Guy's arm reacts to this transformation and as the Busoma charges forward, the mysterious guy summons another Chakram on top of the Busoma. He then follows it up by trapping the Busoma inside his Chakram. The mysterious man shrinks his Chakram, which makes kills the Busoma, leaving the weapon behind. The mysterious guy bids them goodbye but senses the power coming from Guy's arm. Both Guy and Sayaka stand up and the mysterious guy runs towards Guy and punches his face. He then lifts Guy after noticing Guy's regression, telling him to show his true power. An old guy appears behind them and says that if Guy can control himself, he'll take him to the Shashadai. If not, he will end Guy's life. He then asks the grandpa what's his deal with his group and the grandpa answers that his connections grow as he ages, mentioning the Gabai which is like Shashadai, but instead of chrysalises, they are humans. One of the Gabus arrives and tells the man to back off since he's basically a walking Busoma. The situation between the two opposing factions escalates and the Gabai attacks the man. A shadow claw appears behind the Gabai's feet, but Guy sees this and throws a stone, which scares off the claws. The Gabai takes this as an insult and turns toward Guy, as he's about to go violent but the shadowy Busoma appears behind him, killing him instantly. The Busoma then attacks Guy, throwing multiple projectiles at him. As the projectiles hit Guy, he rewakens his power and his arm transforms again into a sword. Guy then stands up and attacks the Busoma, piercing its head. He then follows up with a downward slash. Since the Busoma is gone, the mysterious man goes after Guy and looks to see if Guy will turn into yet another Busoma. The man throws his chakrams at Guy, which overpowers him. Once Guy is defeated, he reverts back to normal. Just as the man's about to finish Guy, the old man creeps up behind him, which allows Guy and Sayaka to escape. The old man tells the mysterious man that he can take him to someone who knows more than the Shiryu before he can take action against Guy. And so the two heads to the master and ask him for the information he needs about Guy. Meanwhile, Guy and Sayaka head inside a cave to rest. Sayaka reminisces her memory with Guy. Guy finally opens up to Sayaka about himself and tells her that he and Sayaka are living different worlds. Back at the estate, the master tells the mysterious man and grandpa the story of the Shiryu and how it's come to have its name and power. The next morning Guy and Sayaka come home. The man walks up to Guy and asks him if he wants to see a different world. Upon hearing the word, Guy immediately becomes interested and considers the offer. The master tells Guy he's old enough to decide if he wants to come with the man at Shashadai and so Guy decides to come with the man. The two leave the estate in Akijo's busted Lambo. The man introduces himself as Seiya Akijo and the two become sort of friends. Before they travel to Shashadai HQ, Akijo drives back to his girlfriend's mansion to visit her. Later that afternoon, a girl starts wreaking havoc in the city, possessed with the power of the Flamberg, another legendary sword. Guy walks on the city and sees this, but the girl notices him and starts attacking him. Guy duels the girl, but the girl is much stronger than him. Just as the girls are about to land a finishing blow, Akijo arrives and throws his chakram at the girl. Seeing the mismatch and strength between them, the girl flees from the scene. 
The next day, Kijo takes Guy on a date and tells him that he needs to enjoy the view of the world while it lasts. He reveals to Guy he's a chrysalis and works at the Shashadai. His job is to battle busomas or chrysalises and retrieve legendary weapons before they can possess anyone. It also means giving up their life as normal humans and becoming super soldiers. A chrysalises will someday transform into a busoma, but Shashidai manages to delay it by putting them in cold storage capsules. Guy then tells Akijo that the Shiryu has been his guardian ever since, watching over him as a mother would to a child. A minute later and Akijo receives orders from HQ and takes Guy with him. They have to stop another Naoki, another chrysalis who became a busoma after being possessed by two legendary weapons. The busoma goes after after Akijo, but Akijo jumps away from him. The Busoma chases after him, so he sends a chakram to the Busoma, but the Busoma overpowers him with his two weapons. Meanwhile, Guy transforms his arm into a sword and saves Akijo from a direct attack. The Busoma dodges Guy's initial attack and appears behind him, but the Guy's quick reflexes manage to block off the Busoma's attacks. The Busoma charges up a lightning ball from his chest, launching it against Guy. However, Akijo manages to use his body just in time to block off the attack. The Busoma plans to follow up with an attack, but the woman he loves tries to bring him back by gaslighting him. Guy uses this opportunity to do a critical backstab damage, which destroys the shell of the Busoma, bringing Naoki back to normal. A few days later Akijo and Guy go for a walk, and Guy meet a teen named Matoba Shin. Shin tells him that he can sense Shiryu's voice, but the earlier girl appears and interrupts them. Guy gets his sword arm out again and duels the girl. The girl's multiple sword combos bring Guy on the defensive. Guy regains his footing and he immediately counterattacks, but the girl dodges it, counterattacking with a piercing attack. He then manages to wound the girl but she flees the scene right after. The next day, Guy and Akijo arrive at the Shashadai HQ and meet the administrator. Akijo recognizes the new administrator as she's the previous administrator's daughter, Kayoka. Later Akijo show Guy the armory and tells Guy he needs to sync with the core Alma inside him, which is pretty much the lifeline of a chrysalis. Once it's tainted, they're going to morph into a busoma. The next day, the ex-administrator Mira wreaks havoc in the city. Akijo tries to confront Mira, but Mira is already consumed by power. Akijo starts his attack but Mira cuts through all of it, so Akijo uses his chakram to restrict Mira's movement. He then follows up with his finishing move, but it decreases his humanity. This momentary weakness becomes Mira's edge as he forces himself out of the bind to attack Akijo. Mira then transforms into Excalibur Prime and blinks into Akijo's position to finish him off. But Guy saves Akijo by parrying the attack. Mira backs off and Guy charges forward, sending a Busoma projectile to him. Mira counterattacks with his own power, and the two square off. Just as Mira is about to do some big damage, Akijo summons a barrage of chakrams and attacks Mira. Mira cuts off the chakrams and Guy attacks him. Guy's attack connects with Mira and manages to keep him on his toes. Akijo charges up his final move and unleashes it on Mira, which Mira blocks. Guy follows up with an attack, but to their surprise, a scythe blocks him off. It is Grimms, the progenitor of all Busomas. Kayoka orders Akijo to retreat, but Akijo tells her that he'll have to repay Mira for their promise a few years ago. Grimms tells them humans will perish and the Busomas will control the world. Guy didn't care and starts charging forward but he gets beaten up by the Grimms. Guy gets up once more and starts attacking the Busoma, but he gets sent back. Akijo follows up with his chakrams but Grimms just casually dodges them. Grimms takes his chance to attack Akijo when he loses blood. Just as Grimms is about to finish him, Guy sends a projectile, wounding Grimms. Guy then charges forward once again, but Akijo attacks him instead, preventing him from turning prematurely into a Busoma. Grimms taps the ground and sends a wave of powerful Busoma aura that knocks both Akijo and Guy. He challenges Guy to become a Busoma, but Akijo uses his remaining strength to bind Guy and prevent it. But Guy still becomes a Busoma and stabs Akijo. Akijo starts to glow and Guy falls down, ending our story. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.